good shape. Your weekly dose of health information on Deutsche Welle. Find out more about what's new in medical treatment, alternative medicine, as well as nutrition, wellness, and beauty. Medical professionals, therapists, and counselors are in our studio to offer their expert advice on In Good Shape. Joining me in the studio today is neurologist Professor Martin Holtkamp. He's director of the Berlin Brandenburg Epilepsy Center. Hello and welcome to the show. Hello. Hello. Professor Holtkamp, how should you react if you witness someone with a seizure? So I think first of all, all witnesses uh, can, be, can keep calm on the patient, so, and they should protect the patient from any injuries. And you have to differentiate what kind of epileptic seizure this is. And if it's a grand mal seizure, what we know, where the patient does not have any control over his body, you just should help him and maybe gently hold the head that there are no injuries afterwards. And, and how can you differentiate as a, as a layman, so to say? So the, 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 the grand mal thing is where you lose your consciousness. Yes, and you are just falling on the floor and then you have a tonic movement and you have a stretching of your extremities and then you have convulsions. And the smallest seizures, what we say, they usually are arising in the temporal lobes and the patient would stay to sit in a seat and is absent, does not react to uh, uh, any comments or any questions and may have some oral automatisms, for example, right. what we've seen in the movie as well. Right. And are there any common mistakes usually people do when they try to help an epileptic patient? Yeah, it's very common that people think they have to put something in the mouth of patients right. who have a grand mal seizure. And I think they want to protect them that they bite on their tongue. And it happens sometimes, but it's not the tongue, the muscle itself. So there's really no injury afterwards. And you really can harm the patient when you put something in the mouth you, because you can break out the teeth of the patient. And the helper himself can hurt him because it's very strong motor activity and you can hurt the finger of the person who wants to help. So keep so if away. You stick a finger inside for the example, mouth. For example, right. keep away from all of this. Don't put anything in the most. And do you always um, have to call an ambulance and call a doctor after a seizure? Yeah, it depends. So when a patient has a chronic epilepsy and the family, for example, or friends know what an epileptic seizure is typical for this patient, and there's a next typical seizure, we don't recommend to call an ambulance. But if it's a first seizure, for example, or if you just witness something on the street and you don't know the person, then of course you have to call an ambulance. It could be the first seizure right. and it could be an alarm signal of something really severe injury in the brain. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, and how dangerous are seizures for themselves? Uh, I, I'm, I'm not speaking about brain tumors causing mm -hmm. um, seizures, but the seizure, can, can you lose some brain cells due to the seizure? Mm. So the dangerous thing is that you can hurt yourself because you don't have control during the seizure and that the seizures are unpredictable. You no, have no idea when it occurs. But inside the brain, we have a lot of hints that even when you have five seizures a month, that is a, high, a quite high seizure frequency, you really don't have a loss or death of, neur of neurons. And this is a very important information for the patients. But, but there are some problems if you've got a seizure, say, while swimming, for instance. Yeah, for example, that's the main risk of dying during epileptic seizure because you can imagine when you're swimming on a lake, but also if you're in your uh, bathtub, if it's only water of a half a meter, you can drown and then you have a high risk of dying that is 20 times higher than in people without epilepsy. Okay. So that's really dangerous. And, and what about the genetic risks? We got a viewer question from South America. Maria Lopez wants to know, her mother suffers from epilepsy. Has Maria and her kids some increased risk of developing epilepsy? Yeah, it depends on what kind of epilepsy you have. And we have these uh, genetic epilepsies that are maybe 15 to 20 percent of all epilepsies. But even in the genetic epilepsies, the risk that your offsprings have epilepsy is maybe 6 to 8 percent. So it's highly unlikely and uh, you shouldn't uh, refrain from getting children only because you have epilepsy. Professor Holcomb, can surgery treat epilepsy effectively? Yes, so when you look at the subgroup of patients who have partial epilepsy, that means they have seizures that arise from one point, from one focus on the brain, and they don't, can, and they can't be treated with antileptic drugs, then they should be assessed for epilepsy surgery. And when you uh, look at the right persons, then they have a 70 to 80 percent chance of completely getting seizure-free. So it's highly effective in the subgroup of patients. So they're seizure-free for the rest of their life? Yes, yes. Okay, but many patients aren't candidates for operation and surgery, so they need to take medications. Um, how does uh, epilepsy medication work? 
Yeah, so the mainstay of treatment, of course, is antileptic drug treatment, and 70 to 80 percent of patients are seizure free with these drugs. And they work at the end uh, that they decrease the excitability of the brain, and there are different mechanisms, and uh, that stops the occurrence of seizures, but also the propagation of seizures. So maybe a seizure occurs, but it's not a gros mild seizure, but a smaller seizure, as we have seen in the movie before. But if I decrease brain activity with a pill, does it mean that there are serious side effects? It can be so. They do not only act against epilepsy, they also act on alertness, for example, or wakefulness. So some patients complain that they're a little bit sleepy. But now in the last 15, 20 years, we have a couple of very new drugs and they are as efficient as the older ones, but they have a lot of less side effects and are well tolerated. So the majority of patients is free of seizures, takes one drug and does not, does not have any side effects. But the drugs don't cure epilepsy, so you have to stay on them? Yes, that's true. They don't cure epilepsy. They just uh, prevent the occurrence of the next epileptic seizure. So it's a kind of secondary prophylaxis. And the question in, what, in which patients you can stop the drugs is a very individual one. And there are a lot of factors regarding etiology and the syndrome and the expectations of the patient when you decide to stop a drug or not. And uh, that can, must be individualized, this decision. And is there anything you can do aside from taking pills? We got a viewer question from India. Divya Tambuli wants to know, is there a special diet for epileptic patients to get rid of seizures? Yeah, that's a very old concept. I think it's 80 years old now. It's called ketogenic diet. And that means that you have a very high fraction of fatty acids in your diet and then the metabolism is changed in the body. The body produces so-called ketone bodies and they enter the brain and they have anti-epileptic activity. But this is no alternative to drugs. It's an endorsement of epileptic drugs, so it's an add-on treatment. But it works in some patients, but you have to be very strict on this diet and it's not so easy. Mm -hmm. and, and what about other points of, of life? Can epileptic patients lead a normal life, say, with alcohol intake? So the majority of people can have a very normal life and we say you don't have to refrain from uh, taking alcohol. When you uh, drink a lot and you are drunk and then the next morning the uh, alcohol goes out of the body and that's a period of very high brain excitability. I think everybody knows who without epilepsy gets drunk. Um, but that's high risky, but the no so normal social alcohol intake, it's no problem and uh, we recommend to drink if people want to drink. If they don't want, they don't have to. And, and, and what about other parts of normal life, like, like being a surgeon, for instance, or being a pilot? Um, are those jobs an alternative for um, epileptic patients? Or can yeah, they just there are some specific rules because you don't have to harm other people. So what you're doing to yourself, it's your own decision, but you can't harm other people. That's why there are driving restrictions. Patients with epilepsy are not allowed to drive a car unless they are seizure-free for one year. And this also applies for different jobs, for example, occupations such as physician. But that's again, it's an individual decision, but usually they have to be one year seizure-free and then they can do their jobs and operate. Pilots so, are a little bit different. It's so if you're epileptic, you have to speak to a neurologist to see if you can become a surgeon. Professor Holtkamp, thanks so much for being with us in the studio today. Thank, Thank you. you.